but, but let's focus. Um, any any kind of color vowel moments or just anything that sort of interested you this week that you'd like to share just to start things off? Is it uh, I've always quarantine oh. or is it oh. green tea quarantine? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ha. is it orange door quarantine or green tea quarantine? The answer, oh. of course, is yes. It depends. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> No, the answer is yes. Uh, either one is acceptable. Let's all try that. Orange door quarantine. 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 Orange Good. Orange door quarantine. Tea quarantine. quarantine. Green Great. Tea and actually, quarantine. let's also practice some, um, just kind of check in on our tech etiquette uh, with each other. And let's go ahead and mute ourselves unless you're speaking, uh, which means I won't mute myself. <laughs> But if you are speaking, then the others will be quieter, and that way we can all practice together without the audio crossing the line. Uh, so that's the nice advantage of muting ourselves. So if you can go ahead and find your mute button, that will allow us to all practice together very effectively. Great. Um, so one more time on the second, we have uh, green tea quarantine. Try that. Green tea quarantine. Great. Um, we love those kinds of words. Bev, what were you going to say? Uh-oh. Let's see. Unmute. There you go. Okay. Well, uh, I thought you were going to share something. No, I didn't have anything. Ah, someone else? To me, it, it's the part of speech that makes a difference. Is it the noun or is it the verb? That's right. So give us an example, Jennifer. I'm in quarantine, but I'm going to quarantine you. <laughs> Good, I feel quarantined. Fantastic. So this is a special night where we have, uh, once a month we bring in uh, users and learners of English, users of Blue Canoe and learners of English, as well as teachers of English. And so this is a great night to hear from people like Jennifer and Robin, and Bev, who teach English and um, that I work with too, and it's such a pleasure seeing all of you here. We also have many Blue Canoe users and learners here tonight and today, depending on your time zone. And so we're very happy to have you. Um, and tonight's session is, is directed toward the users and the learners. So teachers, feel free to pitch in and to add your comments uh, because this is exactly why everyone's here. Okay. Any other color vowel questions or uh, just highlights from the week? Uh. Hi, let's see. Let's see, can anybody, let me ask a question because we can't hear anybody. Penny, have you muted everybody for them or are they muting themselves? Mostly they did it themselves. Okay, so yeah, I'd like everyone to be sure you know how to control your own mute so that you can unmute yourself. Did we have one more comment or question? Uh, so it's, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, uh, so I'm doing the TESOL certificate at Arizona State University and I'm just <sighs> reviewing my uh, movies that I made. And uh, one tricky word was uh, clandestine. Mm, <laughs> I, did, nice. I didn't know how to pronounce that and it depends on your dialect. That's right, right. Yeah. Can you model the different options for us? <laughs> Uh, I think no. I, I I'm not good at modeling yet. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> let's let's give it a try. So we'd have something like clandest clandestine clandestine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or clandestine. Right, right. I think everyone can see from the look on my face which one is my dialect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's clandestine too. Oh um, my gosh! Because yeah, I was like speaking and not thinking about the word until. Well, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> so so clandestine, we can also look it up in our Blue Canoe Dictionary, right? Uh -huh. And if we look it up there, you can hold it up and let us know what you see in there, okay? Uh, meaning hidden, right? Clandestine. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you. So another way to um, participate today is to find the chat. Um, this is a great place to ask a question and I've just posted that. So if you see sort of a, an orange option in your menu that's flashing um, or if you look for the chat you'll find that's a place too uh, that you can comment and add something if you don't wish to speak up. 
Okay, wonderful. Well, today's topic is the oldest technology uh, enhancing the newest technology, and that is the open hand. This was kind of a, an, I don't know if it's an epiphany, but kind of a, a realization I had in the last week where I was finishing up a course I was teaching of color vowel basics. Um, and I, I realized, you know, by the sixth week of the course, we, we work with the chart a lot as teachers, um, everyone. And, and by the sixth week, all of the teachers were aware of the different ways the chart helps us be aware of English. But the hand also changes. And so I thought I would share that tonight with our learners and our users and also with our teachers. Um, so I'd like you to think for a minute, when we have you use the open hand, with Blue Canoe or in any of your learning situations like clandestine or clandestine or what have you, what is the hand really doing for us? You know, and, and I, have, I have three very distinct and important purposes of the hand when I really started to think about it. So, so what are some of those purposes? What does the hand really do for us? Can you take a moment in the chat and add your thoughts? And I'm looking here in the chat and, and Robin, you've added a fourth for me. So there's a fourth um, strong purpose for the hand there. What is this hand all about? Believe me, I'm, I met with a group today in Mexico and you know, it was a group of um, new employees at a company and they were all pretty hesitant to you know, do this thing with their hand. And I said, I, I promise you this is based on science, it's effective. And if I were just trying to be quirky, I would do something a lot more interesting than that. <laughs> um, so the hand is, it's just this very simple gesture, but it does a lot. So what I see here in the comments is that it, yes, it shows the stressed syllable. Um, so that is the first, is that it's for stress. Um, the example that I've been working with a lot lately, again, because, because users are interested in it, is the word, try this, eligible eligible so this word eligible uh, of course it means that you know that you're allowed to do something or that your your status is proper for doing something and yet if you don't use the right stress location it can easily become illegible illegible and that word means unreadable you know that it's not um, something that you can read uh, because the handwriting is so poor something like that and so suddenly the, the hand is what allows us to differentiate between those two very, very similar words, um, eligible and illegible, okay? Um, and so here's illegible. This is with my very fancy high-tech whiteboard. Okay, so if we look at my fancy high-tech whiteboard, let me find myself here. Good. Um, so we use the line to show where the hand opens. And you see this in Blue Canoe, you see this in other materials. Here's eligible and here's illegible, right? And then we would provide a color vowel to mark it. So we have red, eligible, and actually red is also for illegible. Those are both red pepper words, okay? So purpose number one, location of stress. Where is it? Can we try a few together? How about desert? If you open up your, if you turn on your, your cameras, if you're interested users um, and learners, we saw, see a lot of teachers in the room, but you're welcome to do this too. So if we take desert, where's the stress? Desert. I can use my kazoo to highlight the note. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right, desert. So the hand is going out where the note is up, it's also going out where the note is longest, desert or dessert, right? Dessert. So red pepper desert or purple shirt dessert. Now what I've done though is I've moved into the second purpose of the hand, which is to indicate the color vowel if you're looking at the chart um, or to point to it if you're using an image. Um, but when you're there in this world of the color vowel chart, the handy part of the hand, and we call that, you know that word handy, isn't that interesting? You know, handy because it's something you can grab, um, is that we can actually start to pay attention to the vowel quality. You know, is it eligible or something closer to eligible? 
eligible, eligible. It's actually red pepper, eligible. But what if a learner is saying eligible, 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 and using a gray word? So we can actually start to locate where the vowel is again by using our hand. And that's the yoga that we include in the videos in Blue Canoe. Um, and if you are new to Blue Canoe tonight and coming to this webinar, this session uh, for the first time, know that we have all of our Color Vowel Yoga videos up on the Blue Canoe YouTube site, okay? Um, so if we come down and use a bit of yoga, we can locate red very effectively and make it different from black or from gray. Yeah, eh, eh. So that's purpose number two of the hand. Um, so I can take a couple comments after we do the third. Um, the third is the question of movement. Does the vowel move or does it not move? And so when we're looking at something like, let's take two similar words like paper and pepper, okay? So if we have pepper and paper, like the pepper, I like to put green pepper on my food, and then paper, you know, those words can sound very similar to some speakers of English, uh, depending on their first language. So it really comes down to the difference between the pe -e -e, the red sound, and a paper. And if you're using your hand, um, what you can do is stay still on your gesture for the red sound here. Here's pepper. Pepper. Everyone try red, pepper, pepper. Red, pepper, pepper. So notice my hand is actually in one position. It's like a stop sign. Pepper. Now if I come to paper, which is a gray word, I can do something different that helps me achieve the difference between the sound in paper and the sound in pepper. And it goes back to the question of movement. Gray day paper moves from this position up to green. And so I can use my hand in the same way. Gray day paper. Or if I use two hands, it's, it's a little easier because it doesn't look so much like I'm doing this. I can say gray day paper from the side. Gray day paper. And that creates the time that you need to create that sound that's different from a. Eh. A. Eh. So the three that I'm really focusing on tonight, the three purposes of the hand, is in, in all of those cases, it's focusing the mind as well as the mouth on the location of stress, that would be the mind, and then the mouth would be the performance of the vowel and of the time. So we have the time on the vowel too. So I actually think I've, I've now touched on four. Um, the fifth one that Robin Barr has mentioned here in the chat would be the, the question of if you're having difficulty finding that vowel sound, you can actually um, do what we call grabbing it. So if we take a word like um, black cat, ah, 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 we can start to really feel the black position and we can listen to other words. Um, try to think like a word like um, with pepper, we could say pepper, pepper. Pe, eh, 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 eh. then you can really listen to the sound there. And that's super helpful when you're looking at words that look different from the way they sound, like a word like said, S-A-I-D. So if you're, if you're getting stuck on the letters, like we often do, here's the word, you know, said, it can really look like side or said. And so if we listen to the way it's actually said, it would be said said, set, eh, 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 eh. And you can hear the red a little bit more clearly when we do that, when we grab the vowel. So, so many um, usefulnesses of the hand. That's why I want you to keep taking it out as you're practicing words, reinforcing words, or even exploring words for the first time. Uh, let's take some questions. This session always goes by you know, quickly, and um, I think I've talked enough, and so we have a lot of, a lot of good comments and questions to work through, okay? Um, and Robin, I'm curious because we have Dr. Barr in the room. Could we have some comments from you? Any other thoughts there about the usefulness of the hand? 
Oh, I, I was just commenting that uh, I use the um, grab grabbing the vowel all the time because if you are surrounding the vowel with consonants, then what your tongue is doing for those consonants changes the the way the vowel feels in your mouth. So you really do have to isolate it and put glottal stops on each side of it to get the pure vowel vowel sound. So if you have like a r a, a, an r after a vowel like car car. Mm -hmm. People say, well, what is that sound? R, R, and, it, and you don't recognize it unless you stop it, unless you grab it at the vowel itself and go, car, car, ka, ah, 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 and then you discover it's olive. That's right. No, and it'll help with all kinds of, of the sort of the environment that the, the vowel is in. Sometimes the consonants will trick us into thinking it's something different. Um, so, yeah, this the glottal stops that Robin's mentioning is this this uh 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 sound. So we can grab car or car ka ah 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 ah. Okay, or you can grab it if, if that if you like that. Good. Um yeah, I love these these are great examples. Um any questions? Do we have any questions from um our teachers, our users about the hand or about anything involving you know our practice of pronunciation? Or how some of the teachers are teaching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, teachers, how is it for you? We we love to hear, you know, how do your students react to this strategy that's unconventional, but very effective? Sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to the idea of what it's for. Um, what I found is, in, right now in social distancing, it's not quite so easy, but the high five is a great way to really convey what it's for in terms of stress, lo stress location. So we can do the high five right here without any danger of, of any um, breaking of the rules. If I take my high five here, you can see the palm of my hand coming toward you, and you can take yours up to the camera, and we can take a word like, um, I don't know, a word like uh, impossible. Let's take impossible. It's the only thing I could think of. And when I say impossible, you'll come up and we'll actually high five. So give that a try. This is something you can do when you teach online. One, two, three, impossible, right? Impossible. So this moment where our hands meet, the high five, is that moment of stress. And when you do it by yourself, the, the idea is that you're opening at that moment. That's the, the, the moment where it's the longest is, is then. So impossible. The entire extension is the vowel. And then the open moment is that peak or the most important point. Okay? I have right. a, 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 something to say. Uh -huh. I use this all the time with my students because I have a lot of students who have a lot of trouble with... Uh, uh, English rhythm and prosody. So especially if we're doing poetry or songs, I have I actually have them uh, clap hands uh, when we when we sing a song or uh, do a poem or something like that, and uh, they clap hands with each other as well. This is again uh, when we're not social distancing. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's something I I use a lot. Um, Paola, I noticed your comment here uh, that you're actually getting comfortable using your hand even in public. Uh, that's wonderful. You know, we talk with our hands all the time, actually. And so if you're wondering how to do that in public, uh, we touched on this in an earlier session a few months ago, but the hand moving like this is equivalent and corollary to the way that we move our heads anyway, as English speakers, or our eyes. You know, notice that my eyes will open on the stress. Um, especially when I'm feeling really excited about something. So these gestures that we use unconsciously are in the same location at the same places that we use the open hand as a formal learning gesture. Okay, a question from Gretel uh, about the correct pronunciation of the word issue. Good. Uh, so the word issue, issue, it's easy to uh, look at those S's and feel like they are telling you to say issue um, but we, we actually do something else there. So here's issue, issue, and these two S's become an SH sound, okay, issue, and then everything else is pretty straightforward. So the stress is here, 
and this is a silver word. Okay, and then I don't like that line because it makes me think about stress. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, I'll just do a line here and make this SH. Okay, so now we can see this is a silver pin issue. Uh, this last part is unstressed, but it's not uh, issue, it's a blue sound rather. So we can make this, a, if it's any confusion, you can remind yourself that it's a small blue sound, but the stress is here in silver. Okay, everyone want to try that with me? Silver pin issue. Paola, does that help? Does that help a little bit? Gretel's, Gretel's question. Oh, sorry, Gretel. Yeah. Isn't, isn't, isn't there a, isn't British, um, or isn't there a group of people who say issue? It's an issue. Yeah, you it's know, I think there is. If, and, and then you get that little ya in front of the blue. That's right. So you could do issue. Uh, in fact, the, thank you very much, Jennifer. And by the way, Jennifer, you know, she's our, our bi-dialectal. She, she's British and American <laughs> and Canadian, I think, there you too. Go. And um, Philadelphia. I do good Philadelphia. <laughs> and Philadelphian. So thanks for reminding me. That's right. So we've got that, that issue. You could do it with a Y here. And it's not so much of a sh sound as it is um, moving that assimilation over to the middle. Issue. But no matter what, it remains a silver word. And that, you know, that's always comforting to know that the stress remains pretty consistent across dialects in terms of its location. Okay. So silver pin issue or silver pin issue. Um, thank you. Gretel is also asking about turtle. Turtle? I don't know if she One says of my Gretel favorite or words. Gretel. But it, What's our question here? Dull. It's a problem. Uh-huh, pronunciation of it. All right, well, let's give turtle a try. So we've got turtle. And by the way, I know we're rounding off. Well, we're okay on time. We have a few more minutes. Uh, so stick, stick with me. Here we go. We've got turtle. So turtle's interesting because we've got a couple of T's in there. Uh, they look the same, but they don't behave the same way. Um, but we always want to start with the first question, which is, where is the stress, right? So where is the stress in turtle? Turtle turtle. <laughs> Either way, turtle is uh, stressed in the first syllable. Second question we always ask, what color is that stress? Right? Now, what color do you hear? Yeah, I, I see purple, a lot of people. Purple. Purple, that's right. So yeah. we see purple. Right, so this is a purple word. If I'm using a blackboard or a whiteboard in a nicer way, I might make that purple a little smaller. Just so I have space, good, purple. So per turtle is a purple word. And then if we continue feeling like we want to dig further, if that doesn't solve the problem, we can bring in this question of the T's, right? So the first T, t turtle, t t. So this one is, an, it's what we call aspirated or it has a, a puff of air coming from it, turtle. And let's see, how might I, what would be a nice way? I can do a little, um, what, a little mark above it? How would I do that, Rob? What's the best mark I can use for aspiration that's sort of friendly to people? A little H. A little H. A little, hmm. T. T. It kind of looks like th to me. I'm not sure for the average audience. You can use a backwards apostrophe, but some people think that looks like a bottle stop. I don't know. I'm going to do that. Turtle. I just okay. something that sort of shows that it, you know, a little puff of air. Yeah. So we're trying not to get too uh, technical here, but everyone try the t. You can feel it in front of your, if you put your hand here, t turtle. Okay. So this second t doesn't behave in the same way. It's not turtle. Um, and that's because it's not in the stressed syllable. If it were at the beginning of, of a syllable, sorry, if it were at the beginning of a syllable, it would be aspirated. But this one, it behaves more like a, a d turtle turtle. So I might put a little line through this and prefer the d. And if we're still having difficulty, let's build backwards. So we say dull, dull, everyone, dull, dull. Now turtle, 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 turtle. Last part, dull, 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 dull. Add it, turtle, turtle, turtle. 
turtle. So you can do that, move, move your way backward just to, to practice it a bit. And that's pretty much what I would say. There's a little bit of a, a tricky trickiness with, what do we want to call this, teachers? What's going on here? I know, I know. Robin knows. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Weird, weird spelling, teacher. Weird spelling? Because <laughs> it's not, it's le, not l. Okay, so the spelling might seem like it says turtle or something, yeah. but there, but just in terms of the sound, if you just listen, turtle, oh. turtle. Uh, uh. Mm. Yeah, it almost sounds like a vowel. Almost sounds like I yeah, hear yeah. sometimes people say turtle, oh. turtle. Uh, so that that ending part sounds almost like a vowel, like a almost a rose or an olive tur turtle. Oh. But it's, it's actually what we call a dark. You know, it's called a dark L. So it is an L, but L. it's not like la la. It's an all. Yeah, Robin. It is a vowel, except it's not one of our color vowels because it never occurs on a stressed syllable in English. There we go. That so it's, a, it's an unstressed, vocalic or vowel-like L, L sound. Just like and it does, it, it pulls way R. back here, right? Yeah. So instead yes. of L, which usually taps up here, La, 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 it's touching with the tip of your tongue right up here, la, 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 la. It's actually back here sounding vowel-like. And if it's touching, it's only touching and kind of on the sides in the back where the, where the tongue is connected. Oh, so here we have turtle, turtle. And so we call that the dark L. It's a lot like the way R can be the vowel er, purple. Yeah, it'd be lovely if we, we could have, we, we, it'd be nice to have a vowel. Um, named after Dark Owl. But there, there is no word that has it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I was wondering if we could cover, I was, I was looking at some of the folks who are here. We've got people like Roland who I think do a lot of like one-on-one -on, -one on, but what about some of our folks like Paula and Gretel who are going to be teaching? They're all moving online for the first time. I think they're not the only ones. And I'm thinking about specifically the open hand and I'm thinking about, you know, your idea of a high five. Is there a group high five or ways that that especially those gals or everyone else can make everyone feel comfortable in a group setting with. Right. Well, a couple of things. I'm just going to think, talk about Zoom for a minute. It, it depends on how you're looking at Zoom. So right now, if you look up in the upper right corner of your screen, you'll see that you have two choices at least. You've got speaker view and then you have um, maybe the gallery view. Yeah. Take a look around and try to get it so that you're looking at all of us at once. Does everyone see that where you can see everybody at the same time? So that can be pretty exciting if you're teaching a group or if you're in a group. Watch now as we do the high five, those of us that we can see. Everyone, let's just try um, high, let's just say five, ready? Five, yeah. So we can all see those hands pop up and get really close. So that's a visual high five that works really well. Um, it, you know, maybe the word, it, let's try turtle, right? So we'd say purple shirt turtle. Try the high five on the word turtle. Ready? Purple shirt turtle. Great. So I see all these hands kind of come up visually close and that, that's pretty effective. Um, the next one would be just to unmute people one at a time and do some practice. Okay. There is sort of an inherent trickiness to sound in Zoom or almost any uh, video conferencing tool because we can't cross each other through the ether. We have to speak one at a time. So that's the only little challenge. Um, but we certainly can do a lot of things in Zoom, um, you know, chants and so forth uh, when we're muting. So, you know, I have faith that you're speaking out loud, for example. When I say purple shirt turtle, your turn, ready? I, I trust that you're speaking out loud and, um, and then that puts some responsibility on, on you, the participants too. So there's kind of a, a, an agreement in there, okay? Wonderful. Um, uh, for um, new teachers, um, rem going back to what um, Karen said before, this, this is a tool and just like you would tell your students, you know, take out your pencils, you know, get out your notebooks. Um, as, as your students are getting used to it, I always say, take out your hands. Okay, let's take out your hands. And that, that kind of phrase is kind of tells them, okay, 
um, it's time to use this tool now. And, um, you know, it's all about making them see the purpose in it. And, um, you know, some of them are going to be reluctant at first, but there's, uh, when everybody else is doing it, especially when you're in a classroom, if we ever get back to classrooms again, um, there's something about all, everybody else doing that that gets people over any inhibition they have. That's right. Good. So teachers, can we finish out our session here with any uh, advice you have for students in the room with, or just inspiration we have about the hand, things that you've seen your students succeed with? What has it done for you and your students? And can we maybe round things out with those thoughts? Once you start using it, you're, it, I, I think it was Paula who said that she's getting used to doing it in public now you're going to start using your hand and you're not even going to realize it. And you, you're because you're starting to internalize that rhythm of English. And I had a, I had a student, my name is Campion and everyone thinks it's Italian and wants to call me Campion. And so, you know, that we spend the first week of class saying it's Mrs. Campion, Mrs. Campion. And I have a student to this day who doesn't just say Mrs. Campion. She says Mrs. Campion. She has to use her hand when she does it. Robin. Something I have to emphasize with my students is that they can't be half-hearted about it. They can't just go, um, yeah. you know, uh, a great day, amazing, right? If you really need to extend your arm all the way to the front, gray, day, amazing, because that's the only way to get the right amount of time on vowel. So I, if they aren't extending their arm far enough, I make them do the, you know, uh, across the table with me. I make them uh, uh, hit, hit my hands. That's right. Yeah, it, exactly. And I'll share just briefly, you know, when I went to Peru for a, a follow-up training of teachers, these were all Spanish speaking teachers of English. And they knew about the open hand, they were trained in it with the extension of the arm. And yet when I went back the second year, they were talking like this and I could hear it in their speech. They sounded like they were speaking Spanish again. Um, it was English that sounded not like English because they were talking like this. So when we had- yeah, them Same as same, same, like this. same as you now? Yeah, yeah, Japanese people I don't like gesture and how to say it? largely or like that so they just undo like that yeah. red paper blah blah, blah. and the, but children and little kids do um they can um enjoy this red dress something yeah yeah, yeah like that so adult people unfortunately do like that do, do. <laughs> so, yeah. the more we can tell those stories about that effectiveness the, the better, good. Any other thoughts to close down the session? I love meeting with you every week, everybody. It's just great. Um, please, you know, tell your friends and tell yourself, collect those questions during the week. And anytime we get together on a Thursday night, Friday morning, wherever you are, um, this is the place, you know, this is our, our sort of live moment each week when you can bring those questions, any question at all. Um, learners and users out there, you know, we get together every uh, once a month, usually the third Thursday or so is a session where we bring you in for your questions and then all these teachers are here to help. So uh, let's keep doing that and have a safe and healthy week and we'll see each other again soon. Okay. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Now, have a great day. Yeah, great seeing you.